Our final speaker for the day is Toros Gökert, who is, who is going to speak about Python on Azure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Toros. Uh, I'm from Turkey, Istanbul. Uh, I'm Cloud Solution Architect in Microsoft. Uh, I'm working in Middle East and Africa, uh, working with partners who are developing or deploying applications into the cloud. Um, I have been working with open source tools, uh, developing software for more than 15 years. And uh, I have been work in different industries, like from telco, developing a um, custom, custom Linux uh, distribution, or de developing uh, game applications in the cloud and multi multiplayer games. And I have been in different uh, areas, industries. Um, so today, um, I'm here to talk about uh, Python on Azure, the it's Microsoft solutions for partner uh, for Python. Um, so my agenda is introduction, and I will make a demo, or maybe two, and I will share some resources. Um, so let me start. So why why is Microsoft talking about Python? Um, actually, this is the common question when we go and talk about Linux or when we go and talk about PostgreSQL or any open source. And the question is the same, why is Microsoft talking about X? So uh, today's topic is Python. Um, actually, you know the reasons. Uh, Microsoft also realized those reasons. And just I will just uh, maybe uh, remind the topics that you already know. Um, so one of the, one of the reasons is Python is massively popular. Yes, from, from US to East, I mean to Asia, to Africa, to Europe, everywhere Python is really popular. And, it, uh, and if you want some measures, you can just check Stack Overflow or GitHub or any resource that you'll see that Python, Python is always on the top. And second reason, Python is easy to run, learn, uh, read and learn. Yes, one of the reasons. Uh, when you open the code, co uh, Python code, actually Python code is self-defined. So it, 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 it describes itself um, and it's very clear. Uh, and many, I mean, many syntax that you have uh, that you are using in uh, other languages um, are removed. And when you look at the code, you understand and those indentation and everything so clear. And Python is powerful enough for any workload. Um, in different areas that I will talk about, from uh, AI development to game development. Or, so in any workloads, it's heavy or soft, whatever, you can use anywhere. So uh, Python is very powerful, and um, you can scale easily to uh, to any internet or internet for any internet application or any uh, gaming application backend or uh, or any workload. I mean, so uh, what are the usages? For example, in finance and astronomy, actually, uh, Microsoft is uh, interested in industries. So those uh, and serving and giving solutions to to those industries, and we see that Python is very hugely used in finance and uh, industry, uh, finance and astronomy. So uh, Microsoft uh, believes that um, Microsoft should engage uh, such, such topics uh, in these industries. And also, in aut of course, in automation and web. And when we talk about automation, you know, lots of Python-based um, DevOps tools, open source, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the GitHub or uh, maybe closed source, maybe, but I don't know. I didn't see any closed source Python yet, <laughs> but possible. Uh, so, uh, and Python is the most popular teaching language. Uh, in in US, uh, based on the statistics, Python is the uh, most popular uh, teaching language in the universities. So I, I know that there are many other reasons. So these are the uh, focus topics that Microsoft realized, these are very important. So uh, we, we need to be in, uh, in, in, in this programming language and in this community and uh, in this area. 
So um, you want Python, and we want to offer Python, and how? So Microsoft believes that um, we, 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 we need to develop, and we developed an application platform. And this application platform is open and, uh, comp and, and provides compre comprehensive solution for uh, any developer, any platform, and uh, any language, actually. So uh, when we talk about this flexibility, uh, first, we need to make it open. Um, so we need to, pro we need to uh, provide, uh, provide support for uh, multiple languages, frameworks, um, and databases, and many tools. Uh, and another thing is we, we, we want to make our application platform very productive. Uh, what do we mean by productive? So you need to develop fast. You need to uh, go to production fast. So uh, we we are making our pro uh, making our uh, platform application platform um, faster and productive every day uh, and improving day by day. And also we want our pro platform to be reachable uh, from everywhere. It can be hybrid. It can be on cloud or it can be multi cloud. So uh, this is this is uh, the uh, the couple of a couple of solutions open source solutions that you can deploy and use on Microsoft. Uh, we know that open source is not uh, just these solutions, but uh, we put this in different categories uh, just to see that what can we do, what can we deploy in uh, Microsoft Azure. So. Um, DevOps, management, applications, and frameworks, and tools, and databases. Uh, we, there, there's a lot of uh, solutions that you can use in Microsoft. From infrastructure, you can deploy uh, l many kinds of Linux distributions, and even the enterprise types like SUSE and Red Hat. Or if you want to go with the uh, community ones like Ubuntu or uh, CentOS, yeah, th th that if you want to choose that way, of course, you can go. And so this is the this is the message that <laughs> uh, Microsoft brings here: uh, Azure Cloud for all. Uh, so I mean, the any developer, any platform, any language. So we we want to be the cloud for all. So and we want to provide, and we want to make uh, ourselves differentiate uh, differentiate uh, in in such pillars like productivity hybrid, intelligent, and trusted. So when we talk about trusted, for example, it doesn't just mean security. Also, it, uh, also for, for especially enterprises, they are looking for some certifications, and they, they, they are asked for the, those certifications. And we bring those certifications in different regions. And um, for intelligent, we, we, we started uh, describing Microsoft uh, Azure as an intelligent cloud, not just cloud. So we call it intelligent cloud. What, does, what do we mean by intelligent? We put a lot of intelligent solutions from machine learning to cognitive sources uh, into our cloud, and we are improving so fast uh, and bringing lots of s solutions here. So hybrid, we have Azure Stack, so you can deploy on-premises and in, uh, in cloud, and you can extend your cloud to your on-premises environment. And productivity with our end-to-end -end solutions from development to production. We have lots of solutions that I will cover later. Um, so this, this is the map of Microsoft Azure uh, data centers in the world. So uh, here we have 54 regions. Some of them are coming. Some of them are there. Uh, for example, in South Africa, we, we are going to have two data centers. Um, in Johannesburg and in Cape Town in December. Uh, so um, I think it's going to be a huge move. Uh, I hope uh, we are going to have another region in Turkey, so we are missing this so much. So it's very important because, uh, I mean, from ping times to deployment times to maybe even for pricing, and everything uh, uh, differentiates when you have a region there, right? So uh, being close to the data center is very important. But uh, 
the the idea in the cloud is uh, we the, the message of the cloud in all cloud cloud providers nobody says that we will not fail the idea the the main uh, the main focus on cloud is resiliency for uh, for failures so we have lots of regions so if you can deploy your application in one region and you can also uh, deploy your application again in another region and you can be you can make a failover environment so if re something really happen uh, in a region you can uh, move to another region and continue your business so this is very important so uh, we of course we try to make uh, our data centers highly available and uh, we design them not to fail but you cannot uh, know what will happen an earthquake, a tsunami, or whatever can happen in a region. So um, though all those regions are to provide uh, high availability and resiliency. Of course, if the, if the world is not destroyed totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so this is a mass <laughs> messy slide. Yeah, so uh, actually, uh, in Azure, we have more than 100 services. So this is the summary. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to talk about all the services today, just to show that uh, we have lots of services in different areas, from developer services to uh, application platform to intelligence, hybrid cloud, compute. And um, they're all on top of infrastructure services, like compute, storage, and networking. So. Actually, the cloud started with this story, like storage, compute, and networking. And then on top of that, uh, based on the requirements, we start building other services. So um, I, I'm going to talk about these other services directly related to Python now. First of all, uh, we have a Python SDK. Um, so you can use this Python SDK for uh, two purposes, two main purposes. Uh, one of them is you can manage your Azure services using this Python SDK. Uh, so you can uh, put it in your Python application and you can create a cloud service and you can or destroy it or you can manage, com make configuration and you can write your own cloud management code by yourself using this SDK. Or uh, using this SDK, also you can uh, communicate with some other Azure services like database services, right? So when you uh, import this uh, library in your application and, uh, and it, it brings you an easier way to communicate uh, the services like database services easily in your application rather than calling the HT making the HTTP API calls to the, to the uh, Azure endpoint because normally the cloud services are uh, working like HTTP services. So, so uh, without this SDKs, you have to, the process is like you first get the token to access the services, and then you use this token, and again, make requests to different services and get responses. So it's not easy to manage. So, you know, in any API environment, we always try to build an uh, SDK and use that SDK in our application. So this is already built for your application. And second, um, developer services and tools. Um, in, 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 uh, this is not just Microsoft services, also the, this is about tools. Uh, so for example, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is open source. And uh, I, was, I was using Atom before v, uh, Visual Studio Code and before that I was using Sublime. I don't know how many of you have used Sublime here? Still using? Yeah? <laughs> OK. So I, I really recommend VS Code. It's, uh, it's really, it has really cool features and um, very uh, good development in that. And also we, in Visual Studio, even Visual Studio Community Edition, you can use for Python development. And uh, you can use Azure CLI uh, to, uh, to communicate with Azure. And in Dev, you can also use um, Azure SDK to communicate with Azure DevOps services. 
Uh, we were calling those like VSTS, and it was a weird name, really, Visual Studio Team Services. And so luckily they changed the name and made it Azure DevOps Services. So it, there's a couple of services under it, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Uh, you know, uh, I, I have been using Jenkins for, I don't know, for a decade. Uh, how many of you have been using Jenkins and maybe still using? Yeah. So yeah, this is this is the maybe the, the, the def, de facto tool for DevOps. So here uh, we have Azure DevOps um, that you can use uh, for uh, building and deploying to your on-premises and to cloud. So this is not just for uh, you just for using for the cloud services. So this is a separate solution uh, and. Uh, the good, si the good side of it is you don't have to manage the uh, underlying environment, the infrastructure, <coughs> like the virtual machine or server or anything, or networking or uh, storage. So it's a ready-to-use uh, software as a service, like, like a software as a sol service uh, solution. Uh, but it's very configurable. You can uh, configure your deployments, your builds. <coughs> and it's also, uh, it also contains lots of other services like uh, project, man uh, project management style tools, Azure boards with the new name. And it also has repos like GitHub. Uh, so uh, if you want to keep your uh, repos privately in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment that just you want to reach, so you can use uh, Azure repos for that. Also, with the acquisition of uh, GitHub, you can also continue using GitHub. So Azure DevOps, also the CI, CD pipeline, uh, you, you can integrate it with uh, GitHub and also Azure uh, repos. So you can integrate it actually even with your own uh, private repositories in your data center. Um, so other developer tools, Azure Netbook, Notebooks, uh, so we, uh, we had some talk today about Jupyter Notebooks. So this is a uh, browser-based ready service. Uh, so you can uh, write or use or share your Jupyter Notebooks on uh, this service. Um, you don't need to manage any server or any infrastructure again. Uh, and the last thing that I want to mention is application monitoring and diagnostics. Um, so. Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with that, but uh, generally, when you are developing a code and you, when you deploy, you want to see the results, what's happening into my application. And, and we are using different tools, and there's a couple of tools in the uh, industry. So uh, maybe you are familiar with uh, DynaTrace or AppDynamics. Um, so this is, this is sort of similar tool, again. You can integrate into your a Python uh, application, and you configure it to communicate with application insights service, and you can monitor your uh, application, how it's working, crash reports, or everything, and you can drill down into errors, and you can see what's happening uh, with this application insights uh, solution. Um, so this is an example of uh, Azure CLI. Um, here, maybe my mouse. Yeah, OK. So here, for example, using Azure CLI, you can create an Azure web application service. Uh, and you can deploy your uh, Python, envir Python application here. So here you uh, define like runtime Python 3.7. Now it's being supported. And you can deploy to uh, local Git that's already existing in uh, in this uh, service, and I want to show uh, what are the possible, what are the options, um, what are the application platform options that we can deploy our Python application. So for app hosting, under the name of app hosting, we have a couple of services. So um, when you look at on the left side, you see that uh, there is pass section and there is IAS section. So in pass section, we are developing uh, new and new services every day. And these services are, the first one is here, app service. 
Uh, App Service is a platform service that you can use for many different languages. So now it's supporting Python on Linux. Uh, so uh, all, it also supports .NET, .NET Core, uh, obviously, Microsoft. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Node.js and PHP and it's, it continues supporting other languages and it also uh, brought support for Java and uh, not just not uh, Java for the competitor company, <laughs> the, the open version. <laughs> yeah, and we have the, we have the environment uh, functions. This is the serverless environment, Azure functions. Um, so in this solution, you don't have to, in this platform, you don't have to manage any uh, server or you don't have to uh, describe any server really. You just deploy your code and you only pay for the time uh, that your code runs. I mean, it doesn't, yeah, I mean, normally in platform services, what you do is you provision a platform service and you start paying for the minutes, for the hours that service is uh, staying there, even if you are not getting any request. But in Azure Functions, you only pay when you get a request. So Azure Functions started, uh, started giving support for Python. Uh, and we also have Kubernetes as a service, so you can deploy your Docker, and Docker on Kubernetes. And container instance is similar to Azure Functions, and it's also, as, it's also sort of uh, serverless, uh, serverless container. And we have also batch uh, platform so that you can run your batch jobs here. Uh, and it also supports uh, Python and obviously Linux VMs if you just want to use and, pro and provision a virtual machine and put your application and you want to manage everything, of course you can use the virtual machines again. So this is an example in the Azure portal. Uh, how many of you uh, are using Azure or have used? Okay, maybe uh, for, for the people who haven't used maybe this, uh, this slide doesn't make sense. So it just shows that we, have, we are supporting Python 3.7 uh, now uh, in the app, app service. Uh, other areas that we support Python is AI and machine learning. Uh, so uh, we categorize Microsoft's uh, AI into two, uh, into two uh, topics. One of them is machine learning, the other one is cognitive services. In machine learning, you can uh, define your own models and everything, so you can use Python here. Or you can use cognitive services, these are ready to use services like uh, computer vision or text analytics. I mean, you send your, for, for example, you send a photo and it gives you the, uh, it gives you information about who is in that photo, uh, or it gives you information about the emotions of the, of a face in that photo. So it gives you some probabilistic uh, results. So you can identify the emotion from that. And so there are some integration services here. Uh, that you can use in your uh, Python application with SDKs. So you can keep your uh, passwords and, uh, and some secrets in Key Vault so that when you are deploying to a production environment, uh, your code can check, get the uh, related keys or secrets from there. So you, so you're, you don't have to, I mean, everybody doesn't have to know the uh, know the, those secrets while deploying. So only the production, only the DevOps processes uh, can get this uh, using from Key Vault. Or we have logic apps for API management. We have uh, API management service or service bus event hub for, uh, for uh, asynchronous communication you, or for message queuing. And we have queue service for uh, message queuing again. So, um, for data solutions, uh, in Azure we have a couple of data solutions uh, from different perspective. Uh, so you can store your data, I mean by storing as a file storage, blob storage. So huge terabytes or petabyte scale uh, storage. Or you can use NoSQL service 
uh, with under name of Cosmos DB. So this Cosmos DB is an engine that supports different uh, different APIs. Like you can talk to this engine as you are talking to MongoDB, or you can talk to this engine as you are talking to Cassandra, or or it has its uh, specific spe uh, SQL-like uh, communication uh, language. Also, you can use that one too, or you can use uh, SQL. You know the SQL Server, you can use SQL Server or MySQL or PostgreSQL as a managed service here. Um, also, we have the Azure Search, so if you want to use search capabilities in your application, you can integrate your Python application with, tho with those services. So you can integrate all these services that I mentioned using the SDKs uh, that we provide, and you can enrich your application uh, with ready-to-use services. So I would like to show you a fast demo. How can you deploy an application uh, in Azure? How fast you can deploy an application? And how can you uh, play with it? How can you change the code and uh, see how it's being deployed very fast? So I'm going to move here. So we have a service called um, here DevOps projects in Azure. So in this, in this, pro, uh, in this solution, uh, in this service, actually this is an interface that integrates many Azure services. First you, define, first you define your application type, then you define your uh, service that you want to deploy. It can be a virtual machine, it can be a Docker container environment, or it can be a platform service. Then you define the uh, CI CD process, and it handle uh, it creates all these resources for you for you and you can then later go and modify all these services for your needs so i will show you how you can create this one uh, first i go here so i click so this is azure portal so i click on create a resource and write devops project and it's coming So what am I going to do is I'm going to create a Python Django application and deploy it into a service and I will edit it and see how it's how the CI CD process is happening. So I can choose from these uh, languages the application platforms Python. I'm selecting next. So here the there are three ready to use fra uh, frameworks Django, Bodle or Flux. I can go with Django. So here I have two options, web app for containers or web app. So I'm going to use containers uh, here in this demo. So it will, what, what it's going to do is it will go and pack, package a Django default pack, a Django application into a container and it will build, put the image in the container registry and it will deploy to a app service platform for containers. So I will choose use existing, so I have some. So this is configuring the DevOps service in Azure. So I can give a name, Dev, oh, sorry, Python, za, okay. And web app name, okay, central. Just done. So it's going to create uh, these all these resources, the platform, the DevOps environment, and packaging and registry is going to manage all of this in almost five minutes. But uh, I don't have five minutes, so I will move to already existing one. <laughs> yeah, so here you can see four regions. One of them is CD, CI CD pipeline. The other one is Azure resources, application insights, and repository. Uh, so the, the Azure resources shows the uh, the environment that my application is running. So when I click on browse, it's going to the domain name it just created under Azure Websites Net, and I can see my application is uh, running here. So it, uh, it gives a successful uh, comment here. So what I want to do is I want to make a change in my application, and I want to see the release pipeline, How what's happening, in which stage is it. So what am I going to do is I'll close this and go back, 
And I will go, so you see there is repository here. I click on code and go to my files. So here on the left hand side, you, you see the Azure DevOps services. There's a couple of services, boards, repos, pipelines, and test plans. So in repos, I'm going to see my files in, um, in GitHub repo. So I will go here and in my Python application. So here you see there is a Docker file. So I will go in app and in static. I'm going to change the main page. So where is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'm going to change the index page and I will write. So I'm changing this code directly from the repo, but don't do that in production. <laughs> so what am I going to do is I'll change Python. So no, PyConza is great. So I will commit this directly from here to master. Don't do this at home. And don't write such comments, updated, meaningless comments. So I'm just doing this for demo purposes. OK, I committed it. So I want to see what's happening. I'm going back to here and putting a refresh here. So here, you see there is the comment is here, updated. So let me focus, if you don't see. Updated index HTML. So build is in progress. And I want to see what's happening in the build. So when I click on it, I'm going to the build process in the Azure DevOps service. So waiting for running jobs to finish. So it's happening. And by the time it's going, I will move and show you. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. So it's going to show me the logs, what's happening here. So actually, it's going to show the steps uh, while it's building the Docker file. In the Docker file, we can see that uh, when I go to code, so sorry, I'm going to source code. So in the Docker file here, you see that it's building the application step by step. And each, on each line, there are like apt, get, update, and install. So it's, it's uh, installing the services re required for Python, and then creating the environment, the directories, and installing SSH, and putting the password root docker. So you saw my password now. <laughs> so, so just for demo. And so. Hopefully, we will see the logs here a little bit slow. Maybe I can show the already existing ones. Um, not yet. So I need to, yeah, OK, it's happening here. So you see, it's happening, getting the source code. Yeah, so far, so good. So this is going to happen, and it's going to build the, uh, build the Docker file, and it's going to show us all of the steps. And so here you are seeing the steps. Initialize agent, initialize job. So the agent means the hosted agent in uh, Azure DevOps. Uh, so this, the, you don't have to deploy any virtual machine to build this. So it's going to uh, check out the uh, source code and building it, and applying all of these steps you see and then it's going to push the image here and build artifact and it's going to deploy the application at the end again in three or two minutes we will see the successful comment will change here so uh, if we are out of time we can take the questions <laughs> from here until it's building okay so we have time for a few questions. If you have a question, please put up your hand and wait until the mic gets to you before you start talking. Uh, questions? Anyone? Anyone? 
I have some vouchers for Asia to give away to people who ask good questions or any questions at all. Anyone? Anyone? Come on, yes! Uh, you mentioned that you're, you guys are putting data centers in South Africa. Yeah. Um, is that because you see a, um, this economy is particularly growing in tech and what's the, what's the nature of the reason behind that? Yeah, actually there, yeah, there, there, there isn't one reason, there are many reasons. Yeah, uh, so one part of this reason is, yes, the business part. The, grow, econ the economy is growing, new opportunities are coming. Uh, but there are other reasons too. We are, we are also growing, so I believe that cloud should cover all over the world. Uh, it should be everywhere that people, that people can reach out. So you can easily deploy your applications, develop your applications. So why, why we, we in South Africa or in, I don't know, Dubai or in India or anywhere, we be, uh, be far away from the uh, origin from the data centers and uh, why we stay behind the other part of the world. So actually this is the result to bring, uh, bring technology and cloud and everything to everywhere. I mean, it's the same, uh, the same message uh, that we are giving. Any developer, any platform, uh, any language. So cloud for all. I mean, cloud for South Africa, cloud for Asia, Europe, and everywhere. Okay, next question, back there. Uh, Hi, Hello. Uh, I've got a question that's also fairly unrelated to the talk, I'm sorry. Um, does Azure have an offering similar to Amazon's Redshift and Google's BigQuery? Yeah, I know you've mentioned yes. um, hosted MySQL and hosted yes. Microsoft SQL and so on, but something more in terms of... Yes, so Azure has a solution uh, similar to that one, and the name of it is Azure SQL Data Warehouse. So it's sometimes it's mixed because we also have SQL database. Uh, this, is, uh, this is also, uh, when you're talking with this so solution, you're like talking to a SQL server. But it has a different engine and it's a columnar uh, database. So it's, the name is SQL Data Warehouse. Any other questions? Anyone? Um, there was a recent announcement about Project xCloud, a gaming service that Microsoft is releasing. Is there going to be special integration with Azure so that game developers can build it straight in the right, in, sorry, do everything in the same place? Uh, so, um, actually, I don't have <laughs> information about that. Okay. Uh, but. Um, if it's related to, I mean, if it's related to backend so, so solutions, so we, we are putting, so we can uh, divide the solutions into uh, two parts, like the client side solutions and the server side, the, the uh, cloud side solutions. So when we are talking about cloud, we are, all, we are growing in, in terms of uh, solutions I already mentioned. But also on the client side, we are also providing SDKs and tools and so um, if, I would like to show f uh, an example how we can uh, develop an application in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code as we are developing in any other uh, environment. So we are also providing solutions for the clients and even for game developers and uh, or any other uh, desktop developers, but we, we continue growing in the backend from the class side too. Any other questions? Hello, so yes, it's not really Azure related, but it's uh, Microsoft and Python. So I want to know, um, I think there was a chat last year, some year ago, about like uh, Python in Excel. Is there any like news, any update on that, like as an official uh, scripting language? I didn't get any update, but I know that news too. I'm, I'm, I'm also waiting for that too, uh, because I want to. So Excel is very powerful. I mean, you can use it for different purposes and just in front of you as an as a end, end user. So, 
uh, it will be a good, uh, good contribution putting Python in it so that, uh, you know, I, I was talking about the value of Python in the world. Lo there are lots of developers and not just developers, many people using Python and learning as schools. I think it will be a good contribution, but I don't have the uh, time, the, the ETA for uh, adding that support into Excel. Just a quick question. The data centers that aren't available yet in South Africa, when do you expect them to be ready? Uh, in, in December this year. So two months or one month uh, we are in, yeah, almost two months. I mean, in December, yeah. Any other questions? Anyone? Thanks. Uh, you stated that running stuff on Azure would mean that I only pay for what I use, basically. But if I run 100 servers currently, I know exactly what that's going to cost me. If, if I'm interested in making the move, how do I estimate and budget? Uh, how do I figure out what it will cost me? OK, so moving your application to virtual machines or anywhere, any, anything in Azure, you mean? Uh, virtual machines. OK, so uh, we have Azure Calculator. Uh, so you can make the calculations in it. Uh, so actually, I can show also, like here, Azure Calculator, and I, and I write in search engine, and oops, no, this one, the second one. Yeah. I, yeah, so this is the pricing calculator. So in this pricing calculator, you can select any service, and every service has different calculation type. So for virtual machines, when I click on it, it just adds, just adds, yes, add it here. So I click on view. So here you select the region and operating system and the tier and the, the types, the uh, core and memory types you can select. You see there's a couple of bunch of um, virtual machines you can select. Uh, they call it SKUs. And you can also select the billing option, pay as you go, one year resort, like classical uh, renting style. And, and at the end, you'll get the price here. And also in this calculator, you can add all of the services and you will get the total calculation down here. So I don't know what I added, but you see that it's also keeping my history. <laughs> Is, was it an answer to your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Anyone? Um, sorry, uh, how often would uh, Microsoft change or Azure change the pricing? Because I think sometime this month or so, or last month, um, it was increased by 20% or so. Um, there, isn't, there isn't a concrete number for the days. I mean, yeah. so it's not like in three months or in six months. So it's happening. Uh, maybe, maybe. It's also depend, depending on the market, also depending on the technology, in, innovation of the hardware or growing in the world. So it depends on a lot of things, I mean. So uh, we don't have a concrete number in this month is happening. Any other questions? I, I just wanted to clarify on that one. Sorry. Um, that price increase loc that we had there was local, um, that you were referring to, and uh, it was to protect the um, local partners that we have, because we had a situation where when, cust when partners come directly to Microsoft, it was more expensive than going through partners. Uh, sorry, it was cheaper than going through partners, so we do protect the local uh, partner economy as well through that. Other questions? Um, can we see the deployed page? See what? Can we see the updated page? Updated page? Yes, the one that we're deploying. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. So, you see, all of them are succeeded. <laughs> and I go back and refresh here, and I will see. Yes, uh, still in progress. <laughs> so, le let, me, let me click on Browse and see. 
Yeah, so uh, build is successful, but still deploying to, to container. Yeah. But I will, I will check that <laughs> time to time. I think we have time for one more question. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, thanks. Um, I see um, Azure is very nicely integrated with uh, GitHub, the repository, um, repo management. Um, obviously, Microsoft bought GitHub. Um, do you are you privy to any plans that Microsoft has for GitHub, or are they just going to let it run, or um, are they going to? Yeah. So the plan is actually uh, we making more integrations with Azure. So it's already happening. So for example, but it's it's bringing more. Uh, more advantage to the community. So without changing the community site, I mean the open source vision, uh, without changing it, but bringing more value to that part. For example, Microsoft brought uh, unlimited free builds for open source project on GitHub. So in, in the past, you were using different uh, build solutions for open source project. Even sometimes you have to pay. But now, if your solution on GitHub is open source, you have uh, unlimited uh, build environment, build agents on Azure now. So we, we are trying to bring more value to the open source rather than closing down <laughs> things. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all that we have time for. Thank you very much again, yep. Taurus. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Okay.